Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, this is day two of our science and engineering camp with Mrs. Belatesh. I'm hoping you're having a good time doing this, these projects with me. I like to see you. I miss you guys. Um, so we're gonna continue today with our volcano and we're gonna do a couple of other things. So I'm just gonna tell you the projects we're gonna work on today. So we're going to continue with our volcano. We're gonna take a look at our rubber egg and if you didn't do a rubber egg yesterday, you can do it today. Um, we're gonna make some paper rockets, and then we're gonna make a density column. And I know it doesn't always sound like these things are connected, but there is a purpose to my madness. I have all of these different activities, and they all kind of relate to each other. And I'll talk about that a little bit today, okay? So I wanted to show you my volcano. First of all, it was stuck to the table this morning. I had to kind of get a spatula and pull it off the table. It's not completely dry yet. And also, I'm kind of uh, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. I don't know if you guys have paint at home. If you have paint, black, brown, red, or orange paint, um, you might wanna just wait and let your volcano dry for another day. Um, I have some paint, but I also thought, well, if I don't, if you guys don't have paint, maybe you have construction paper. So what I thought I would do is I'm going to do a quick, just one more layer of, um, paper mache with some construction paper. So in case you don't have paint at home and maybe you have construction paper, you can make your volcano look more like a volcano using some construction paper. You don't have to if you're if you want to just wait and let it continue to dry and have a white volcano that's perfectly fine it could be a volcano covered with snow right well i'm going to do just a little bit of black construction paper on mine i don't want to put too much glue on it today because i want it to dry so i'm going to put a little bit of glue i'm not going to try to put too much i want it to dry pretty quickly so that maybe maybe not by tomorrow, but the day after, we'll be able to do our volcano explosions. Okay, again, not too much glue. Not too much glue. All righty. Have you guys been out riding your bikes? If you have a bike, been out having a good time on your bicycle? I have been riding my bike a little bit, not as much as I would like. But um, I've been doing a little bit of bike riding. I've been walking around my neighborhood. I don't know if you guys know Mrs. Greenlee, but she is a fifth grade teacher and she is my next door neighbor. And uh, she has a dog named Lola. And I've been seeing Lola out walking a little bit. She's getting a little old and moving a little slower but she is still happy to go outside. All right, all right. Do you guys have dogs? Dogs or cats? I have three cats. My cats are very happy to have all of us home. They're like, what's going on? This is not usual. There's not usually a house full of people around here. It's usually just them hanging out by themselves. So they're kind of liking all of this attention that they're getting. And my son is home from college, so they're very happy to see him. Okay, so I've got, I put some black construction paper on it. I'm gonna do just a few more strips over here. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't wanna put too much um, uh, the paste on it because I want to make sure that it dries by the end of the week because I want us to have our volcano explosion together, which is super fun. Okay. So my three cats, I have three cats. One named Jenny, and she's the oldest cat that I have. She is about 15 years old. 15 and she is a little slower and then I have two other cats Je um, Jenny's the oldest one and then I have um, peanut and puzzle and peanut and puzzle are brothers and sister uh, brother and sister and um, we got them together at the same time 
And we got them, they're only seven years old. We got them after we had had Jenny for quite some time. And Jenny was not very happy <laughs> about having these two cats show up in her household. Uh, yeah, she was not happy about it at all. She still doesn't like them very much. Now this is what, so many years later, she still is not a big fan of having these other cats in the house. But that's the way it is. We like them and she'll, I mean, she gets used to them. All right. My paste is looking good. Take a little piece off of here, fill in this hole. Okay, so I'm almost done. I've got one last side to do, and then I'm gonna let this dry again. I have to say, I love paper mache. It's messy, it is, but I love that feeling of the goop in my fingers. <laughs> I like it. All right, almost done. So again, if yours, if you have paint at home, maybe you don't want to do this extra layer. If you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to, you can't, you, uh, you don't have to. And you can just sit and wait for me to finish before we move on to our next project. But I kind of like it. I like doing the extra paper mache and making it a little bit more, make it a little stronger, make it a little more interesting looking. Yeah. I'm getting down to the end of my paste. Yeah. All right. Again, you might want to wipe off some of the paste so it dries faster. Yeah. I got one more strip to go. Okay, and I'm just gonna wipe all that paste, smooth it out, get try to get extra paste off so I don't leave a lot of paste that's gonna be wet and dry, have to take a long time to dry. I'm gonna wipe it all off. All right, I've got one spot here I'm gonna get cover it up you know I'm not it's not you don't have to be really perfect right all righty okay so I'm gonna let this sit and dry one more day I'm gonna get the goop off of my hands and I'll be right back okay okay here I come hello again all right so uh, I want to take a look at our rubber eggs. My rubber egg, I put it in the vinegar yesterday. So remember, it was one of the chicken's eggs I got from outside, out of the chicken coop. And I put it in some white vinegar. Now, there's going to be a chemical reaction with the white vinegar. So let's see if you can see. Do you see all those bubbles? on the outside of the egg. So yesterday I told you that the eggshell is made out of calcium carbonate. And that's the same thing that's in baking soda and that's what's gonna make our volcano explode when we make it, uh, when we put it together. We put the baking soda and the vinegar together and there's a chemical reaction. So we have a chemical reaction going on on the outside of our egg. And I don't know if you can see, but some of this egg, the shell is actually dissolving. And I'm gonna show you, ooh, when I touch the egg now, it's a little rubbery. It's soft and I can actually rub the egg shell right off of the egg. You might, it might take one or two days for, you, for this to happen with you at your uh, egg at home. But now, this egg, instead of being hard, it's rubbery. I'm gonna put it back in the, my vinegar for maybe one more day. 
If yours is completely soft, you can stop the experiment now. But if yours is still a little bit hard, you can put some more, put it in the egg and the vinegar for another day. But you can see, look at this. Can you do that with a regular egg? So on a regular egg, so we have the shell and then inside the shell, there's this membrane, a membrane. It's like a thin skin and it allows, it, this is another way of protecting the egg because if there was a baby chicken growing in this egg, it would need some protection. And that membrane and the shell actually have tiny little holes in them and allow the baby chick to breathe in and out, in and out while it's growing in the egg. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, so there's this little membrane that's inside and the membrane is still holding the rest of the egg together. But right now, my egg is a rubbery egg. Now, you could do this, you could make rubber chicken bones too. You could take, because our bones are also made out of calcium carbonate. So if we take, if you take a chicken bone and you put it in vinegar, it's gonna take longer, right? It's got a little, it's a little stronger. Um, it might take a week, but eventually you'll be able to bend that chicken bone just like the, just like as if it's a rubber band. So here we go, here is our rubber egg. Yours might take another day. This mine is ready in one day. Pretty cool! Okay, rubber eggs are so awesome. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands again because I have vinegar all over them. Okay, I am back. So boys and girls, the thing we're gonna do now is that we are going to make some paper rockets. And I'm gonna move down here, okay? So I'm gonna pick up my phone and I'm gonna move down to this area where I have a cleaner workspace. Okay, and I'm gonna move my chair. All right, so we're gonna make something. Oh, hi, Tony Boney. We're gonna make something called a paper rocket. And you need to have a straw and you need some paper and a pencil and a ruler. And you also need some crayons or colored pencils or markers, okay? So I'm gonna show you what the end product is first. So here's the straw and I made a paper rocket before and I'm going to just put my straw into the paper rocket and I'm going to blow. I'm gonna use force, let the force be with you. So I'm going to blow on my rocket and it flies away. Now I have another one here, so I don't have to get up and go get that other one. So again, I put the rocket in here and the rocket's closed at the end. So when I blow out of the end of the rocket, the air pushes it out. Force, push, off it went. Okay, so I wanna show you how to, how to do it. Get some paper, get some plain paper. I'm gonna get my paper and a pencil and get a pair of scissors. So you need paper, pencil, scissors, and a ruler, okay? And again, boys and girls, you can always just pause the video, go get your supplies and come back, okay? All righty. So I have some patterns here that you can, that we're gonna use. You don't have to do the, these patterns, but I wanna just use this as my, um, dimensions, this height and the width. Okay, so I'm gonna measure the width of the rocket. So I'm gonna use my, my ruler. And the width of the rocket is one and a half inches wide. Now I'm gonna look at the length of the rocket. Okay. And the length of the rocket is six inches long. Okay. So I'm going to get uh, just a blank piece of paper. I'm using a scratch paper. I've got something on the back. I don't like to waste paper. And I'm going to go kind of to one edge because I wanted to maybe make a couple of these rockets, not just one. And I'm going to go close to the edge. I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go down six to six inches. Okay. And then I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to see if I can turn this down a little bit so you can see my work. Okay. And then I'm gonna go over one and a half inches. One and a half inches. 
And I'm gonna go down to the bottom and I'm gonna measure one and a half inches. Okay, so right now, it looks like this, right? And now I'm gonna close it. So I measured six inches, and I measured one and a half inches, and one and a half inches. And now I'm gonna connect it. Okay, and I might, I'm gonna actually do a couple. So I'm gonna give a little space, and I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna go down six inches, and I'm gonna go up across an inch and a half, and I'm gonna go at the bottom, do an inch and a half, and I'm gonna use my ruler, I'm gonna go back up and connect them. Okay, so now I have two, two little paper rockets uh, and now I'm just going to color them. I could do one all one color or, oh, my color crayons are over here. I'm going to go get them. I like blue and red. Those are two, my two favorite colors. So I'm going to kind of do uh, like a stripey thing. I'm going to do red. And you could do one, all, do it all one color. And you can go outside the lines, guys, right? because we're going to, we are going to um, cut them out. And red, and red, and red. Okay, and then, see this is what I did, like this? And now I'm just gonna fill in with some blue. I like blue. I'm gonna do blue. And you can take your time. You can do a totally cool designs. You can take your time. I'm just doing one very quickly so you can see how to make it. Okay, do you see? I did not, I was not neat and tidy because I'm gonna cut it out. It's okay if I went outside the lines. Okay, so I made just a nice little pattern. And now I'm gonna get my scissors. Here are my scissors. I have teacher scissors, but you should use your child scissors. And I'm gonna cut out my pattern. careful when I'm cutting with scissors, right? You gotta be careful. I'm going just slightly outside the line. I don't wanna go inside the line, I go outside the line. Okay, perfect, I have that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm gonna wrap it around a pencil. A pencil is gonna be slightly bigger than the straw and I want to have just a little bit of space between the straw and the, uh, the paper rocket. So I'm gonna wrap it around the pencil. Come on, wrap around. Again, this might be good to have like a partner. Like if you have a brother or a sister who can help you, that would be good. And I'm gonna pay, take a piece of tape and I'm gonna tape the rocket closed. Okay, I'm not gonna tape it to the, the pencil though, right? I'm taping it to itself. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on the rocket here on that side, get some more tape. All right. Oh, I did an okay job, not great, that's okay. If you don't succeed the first time, you can just do it again, right? Okay, so do you see how I have tape? I've now it get all attached, right? And it comes right off of my pencil. Now, if I do it just like this, it's, it's like a straw itself, right? There's a hole on both ends. And I don't want the air to come out. I want to trap the air at the end. So I'm going to just flatten the end and I'm gonna put a piece of tape over the end. I don't want any air to come out of my rocket, okay? So now I've got my rocket and it's taped closed. I'm gonna get my, my straw. I'm gonna put it in, oh yeah, you see? It has a little bit of give. 
I need to have space so that rock, the, the, uh, it's not stuck to the straw. If it's too tight, there's too much friction and it won't um, explode out. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. One, two, three. Super awesome! Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Cause I kind of, I love them. Mm, maybe I'll make one a little bit more different pattern. I'm gonna put some circles on one. And you know, one of the things you can do, boys and girls, that you can um, set up like a target and you could have practice. You could see how good you are at hitting the target using your rocket. Okay, so this one I did blue dots and I'm just gonna use red to fill in the space. So before the other one, I used mostly blue. This one is gonna be mostly red. Again, I'm coloring. It's okay to go outside the lines. All right, I'm gonna cut it out. I don't wanna to go too close. I don't wanna go inside the line. I wanna go just outside the line. Super fun. Cutting, learning how to cut and practicing cutting is a really good skill. There are so many people who cut things, right? Have you ever, do you do any sewing? One of my sisters, my oldest sister, Jacqueline, is a great seamstress. I don't know if any of you guys have seen all of my science dresses. I love them. Okay, so I've cut them out, right? And now I'm gonna wrap it around the pencil. So one of my sisters, I think I told you yesterday, I have eight sisters. My oldest sister, Jacqueline, she loves to sew. And she's a very good seamstress. And if you've ever seen any of my science dresses, like I have a, a dress all about about space, about has planets and stars on it. And I have a dress about bugs, insects. I have a dress about all these different things and she made them all for me. She's very, very talented. She's in, and you know, if you're a seamstress, you really need to be good at measuring and cutting and pinning. And you have to have a good sense of geometry because you, cut things out flat, right? And then you build a three-dimensional structure thing out of this cloth. So there, being a seamstress is a very good skill. I don't know if you guys know Mrs. Lay, if you had her as a kindergarten teacher, but she is an amazing seamstress. Okay, here's my second one. So now I tape the sides. I want to tape the end. I'm gonna flatten the end. Put a little bit of tape over the end. Okay, flatten the tape over. So now it's flat and it's closed. And I'm gonna get my, my straw. This time, I'm going to, Tony Boney, I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Tony Boney as my target practice. I'm gonna see if I can hit him with my rocket. Okay, Tony, one, two, three, got him. All right, make sure that your parents are okay with you having target practice. I'm sure they don't want to have target practice on them, okay? All right, so let's take a look at our next project. Oh, density columns. Oh, I love density columns. So before I move on, I'm gonna pick up some of these things so I don't leave a big mess. And again, boys and girls, make sure that you clean up every day so that your parents don't say, oh, I don't want you to do that science camp with Mrs. Belatesh because it makes a big mess. Okay, here are, we're gonna talk about density. So I have a, uh, a cup here full of marbles. And it sure looks like it is completely full. It doesn't look like I can put any more marbles into that cup. But boys and girls, guess what? It is not full. There's all kinds of spaces in between the marbles, right? And if I take a cup of water and I pour the water into the cup, and add a little bit more. Now, I have put more stuff, more matter, 
into the cup. I have increased the density of the cup, of the materials, right? So before it was just a cup of marbles and actually air. There was a lot of air in there. And when I took the air out and I added water, I made it heavier. There was more heavy stuff in the same space. That means it has more density. Okay, so I'm gonna use this cup and we're gonna talk about density because different things have different densities and we're gonna see that with this fun experiment. I'm gonna pour out my marbles. Oh no, I lost my marbles. Okay, so what we're going to need in order to do this density column is we need a couple of different things. I have some Cairo syrup. Now, maybe you don't have a huge container of Cairo syrup at home. Um, you might have some uh, honey. You could use honey for this. You could use, um, you could use some uh, syrup. It might, I don't know if it's gonna be thick enough, but. Caro syrup or honey, they would be good. I'm gonna use some soap, some dish soap. And do you see how I'm kind of preparing my little cups in advance? It might be easier for you to do that as well, to prepare them in advance. Don't start pouring everything until you've got everything ready. I'm gonna have some oil. I use materials all the time, but this is vegetable oil. I'm going to use about a half a cup of vegetable oil. And then I'm going to have some water. I'm just going to reach over here and get some water. Okay. Now these materials, boys and girls, all have different densities. They're thicker. There's more stuff inside them. So what we're going to do is that we're going to illustrate that by pouring them one on top of the other and they're going to float on top of each other. So when I look at these materials, I am, I, the, the uh, corn syrup is the thickest. It is the most viscous. So I'm going to pour the corn syrup into a clear plastic glass. You could use a regular glass, but I'm gonna, I have a plastic glass at school. We don't have a lot of glass things at school and I'm gonna pour it into the cup Okay, so I have that on the bottom. Now, boys and girls, I am going to pour in my uh, soap. And I'm gonna pour it very slowly and carefully. Take your time. Look at that. It's sitting right on top of the syrup. They're both liquids, but they don't mix because this, the corn syrup or the honey, is thicker. It is, has more density then the soap. Okay, now I'm gonna add the water. The water go very, very slowly. We want it to go so slowly. So I'm gonna pour it down. I'm pouring as slowly as I can. Yep, there it is. Do you see the water floating on top? It does look like there's a little bit of green on top, but what we have is the corn syrup, we have the soap, we have the water. The last one we're gonna pour on top is the oil. Oil.
Okay, here we go. I have corn syrup, soap, water, oil. This is called a density column because it shows you how density, how, how the thicker something is, the heavier it is, and how each layer floats on top of the other. This is actually really important. Remember yesterday when we were talking about making those aluminum foil boats? Well, that was talking about density, right? If that boat was flat and it had a lot of space uh, it, uh, on top, the water was able to push up and keep it floating. It was less dense than the, the, the water down below. So cool. All right, cougars, I'm having so much fun with you. You could try different materials for a density column. Check, make sure it's okay with your parents first, right? You could add um, some different li liquids and, and pour them slowly and see which one goes on top of the other. Instead of doing a whole cup, one thing you can do is sometimes just mix two liquids and see if one is lighter than the other. This is oil. Oil is lighter than water. It is, and that's kind of sometimes a good thing because then it's easier for us to get out the, uh, the oil when it's, if we've had an oil spill, which is a sad thing. All right, so I've had a good time with you today. Make sure that you clean up when you finish. Tomorrow, we're gonna finish our volcano. Hopefully, it'll be dry enough. And then we've got some more fun activities. Oh gosh, boys and girls, I hope you're having a fun time doing these science and engineering projects with me. Take care, cougars. See you tomorrow.